Hi. Hi. Yeah, just wondering, you, you know, um, well, I presume you're obviously a, a Bible believer. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so, you know, in the Bible, it talks about the, the children of Israel. Yes. And it says that they, um, you know, they're obviously they're in, they're in the land. And then, um, because they sinned, uh, God caused nations to come in. And eventually they got kicked out of the land. So, um, who do you think? Um, well, uh, I suppose I'm jumping ahead too far. <laughs> so they, so they got kicked out, and obviously in in the um, book of uh, Deuteronomy, it gives information about what would happen to them when they get kicked out of the land. That's right. Yeah. Right, so when, when we look at how things are now, uh -huh. uh, do you think that you can still use what's in the book of Deuteronomy to, to see who the um, actual people who were kicked out of the land were? Well, we can go by Genesis and the other books in the, the Tanakh. Uh, for example, one of the art king name would be the Canaanites. Right. Uh, the Canaanites were divided among so many groups of Parasites, Zibbites, and many other types of Canaanites. Yeah. Uh, the ancient Philistines were also Canaanites as well. Yes. Now, God had made a promise to Abraham and uh, Isaac and Jacob that this land of Canaan is belong to them. But it, it's, 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 it's a land that is on that is given not just as a promise, mm. but for the Jewish people who live there to obey God, and that God will do exactly the same thing to them if they disobeyed Him. Yeah. The land would vomit them out. Right, yeah. And that occurred on these three occasions. But each time God brought them back home from the Assyrian ex uh, exile and now from the worldwide exile since 1940 to 1948. Yeah. So the land belongs to God because God is the landlord of all the planet Earth anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he can choose whoever he wants as his tenants, not piece of land. Uh, the Lord Jesus made a parable about the way you look at the, the vineyard. Yeah, yeah. And he says the bad ones, God will take them away and put mm. new ones in there. Yeah. Will obey him. If they don't obey him, God will take them as well. Yeah. So when people look at the land of Israel, you should always understand that God is the landlord. Yeah, yeah. He's the one who owns it. Mm. But he's given it on trust to the Jewish people to look after because there's something that God would do for the land as well, which is the Messiah would come there. So yes. when Jesus came, he came to the house of Israel for the council of the line the tribe of Judah, one of the twelve tribes. Mm. And when the temple was destroyed in AD 70 by General Titus, uh, it was another 65 years before the Roman Empire evicted most of the Jewish people from their own land of Israel into foreign areas as punishment. Yeah. So God allowed that. But God that promised Ezekiel, for example, and Isaiah, that in the last days God would bring them home. So God brought them back from Yemen, God brought them back from Egypt, from Iran, Iraq, and Russia, all over the world, literally, in the last 60, 70 years. Right. So we've seen the promises of God being fulfilled. The desert has actually blossomed, literally. There are crops being grown by Jewish people. People, which people in other parts of the world can't grow things in the desert. Yeah, but <laughs> and we buy them in supermarkets right here in London. Yeah, but are they growing them in the Negev though? Yeah, in the Negev, that's right. The yeah, but Negev, still, yeah. yeah, you've been there. No, no, I haven't been there, just okay. overseas. When yeah, I look I on the map. I've actually been yeah. there. Right. Because I've seen what God has done. So mm. it's amazing to see how God is working right now through His promises of restoration and fulfillment of biblical prophecies oh, right before the night. It's amazing that the days living right. Jesus. Right, so, so, you, so do you think that the, uh, the way that we identify who the Israelites are, do, do we do it according to what, say, the United Nations of man says, or should we go by what the Bible is? Oh, the United Nations is just a man-made agency. The Bible tells you about the 12 tribes, mm. that they'll be restored. When you read the book of, uh, I think it's James, for example, yeah. uh, chapter 1, it actually says the letter to the house of Israel scattered around. So it actually still talks about 12 tribes. In the book of Revelation, it mentions the 12 tribes yet again. So it's continuous. A lot of Jewish people don't believe in God. That is true. I've actually met them. <laughs> but that just like Gentiles, non-Jewish people do. But God has always had a remnant 
given to Jewish people to live in the land, even when the vast majority of Jews were exiled out of the land, there were those a remnant under the Romans, under the Greeks, under the Assyrians, under the Babylonians, everybody. There were right. there was always a tiny remnant that uh, was left around. Uh, okay, so, so nobody could say that God totally 100% kicked them all out. That's impossible. That's not true. Right. So, yeah. so you know when uh, it, talk, it mentions about how Israel will be will be restored, and you know it has it's in various prophecies in the Old Testament. Do you think that those prophecies? Uh, match the restoration that's happened so far. Well, it's a partial restoration. The fullment, of, the fullness of it will happen. I don't know, maybe the next few years. I don't know. Right. I mean, day by day, we see certain prophecies coming through one by one. Mm. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm no doubt about that. God's word will be fulfilled, like Paul talks about in the Book of Romans, in chapter 12. Yeah. And he says, "All Israel will be restored." And that will happen. He never saw it happen in his lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. But it will happen. So just wait for God's calendar to come through. Right. So are you waiting for that to happen yourself? Huh? Are you waiting for Are you waiting for that to happen yourself? Well, yeah, yeah, the real one. Yeah. I mean, the twelve tribes will be there. Yeah. Right. There might not be a temple anymore, or in the future. But there you go. Right. So. Um, so, so if we look, um, this is Ezekiel 20, and I'm trying to find it. Yeah, so Ezekiel 20 and 33. So this is one of the first ones that, that, you, that you come across, which actually explains the restoration. And it says, As I live, says the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you, and I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out to the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretch out arm and with fury poured out and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt so will I plead with you said the Lord God and I will cause you to pass under the rod I will bring you into the bond of the covenant so this part I read so far do you think that's happened yet well, it might have happened partially, but uh, uh, so well, we're not God for Philip. Yeah, but notice what he said. He said they'd bring them into the wilderness of the people. Yeah. So, so that has that happened? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to look at it later on. In the so, so even though God's saying here that He's going to do this, He's going to do it in a way where people want, can't, te can't tell. Jesus. You're going to believe me. No, there's some lunatics around, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. So, so, is he, um, you think, so you feel that he's not going to do it in a direct way like was written here, he's going to do it in a more, um, slow, gradual way? Well, that's one way that God can, can do it. The other day, uh, I think it's Isaiah 6, where God is going to nation be born one day. Yeah. Well, Israel was reborn one day, May 14, 1948. Thanks. So that uh, happened fast, but the other restoration yeah. is that the land itself will be restored gradually. Uh, I think there are tons of verses in the Old Testament to do that. Not just Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Isaiah talks about those things. Right, but, but then you can go on. So, but, but uh, my 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 question is, uh, do you have a problem understanding that, or is there something more germane to it? No, no, no. But my my problem is that the the it seems like the churches are all following what. The UN says rather than what the Bible says. Well, they should follow what God says. <laughs> yeah, so, so then, I agree with you. Yeah, so then why don't they? Then? Well, ask them. Some but, churches uh, are very disobedient, aren't they? Five churches in the book of Revelation are disobedient to God. Yeah. The Lord Jesus rebuked them, right? Mm. Only two were had no warning from God about disobedience. In fact, right. God, the Lord Jesus recommended them. Yeah. And, th and that's those of the seven churches that are already there in the mm. first century. Right. right. So the problem of leadership and obedience has always been with us. So yeah. sometimes the churches will obey the Lord, and I hope they do all the time, but sinful nature as it is, some won't. They would rather obey a political leader or something else outside. Right, so so then what do you what do you believe then? So, so no, I just try to stick to the Bible as much as I know as the Holy Spirit teaches me. Oh, all right. that. Okay, so if I'm wrong, somebody say, by the way, do you realize when you read this, that's not exactly what it says. 
if I'm teachable, I'll understand that. If I'm stubborn, I won't. Right. Okay. So, so, so we can find out then, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So we can uh, do that. Uh, all right. Okay. So, so, so then when he uh, carries on, uh, so 38 says, and I will purge out from among you the rebels, and then that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, Go ye, serve ye every one his idols, and hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in my holy mountain and in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, then shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. So now, that part, yeah. would you say that's happened yet? Well, that's partial. I mean, as uh, I say, the desert is blossoming, which is unusual. So that's yeah. partial. I, uh, I mean, probably the best way to understand how biblical prophecy fails is like when in Dr. Luke chapter 4, the Lord Jesus went to the synagogue and the scroll was given to him from Isaiah. Mm. And he was reading Isaiah chapter, I think it's chapter 60. And then okay. he read the first four verses. Yeah. And the first five onwards about judgment that is to come. Yeah. But he stopped. And he says, today this prophecy is fulfilled in your ears. Mm. So, passage from Isaiah, the Lord divides it into two. The yeah. one that applies them straight away in the mm. first coming, yeah. and the rest which will come later on. Yeah. So that's the way we should look at scripture sometimes, because the world divides like that. So yes, you're correct. There's a restoration going on. Uh, in the 1800s, many Jewish people were not allowed even to live in their own country, the land of Israel. Mm. But gradually, they began to come in flocks. So new cities were born like Nablus, Tel Aviv, etc. Right. And that accelerated. And mm. then, I think in Ezekiel, there's a prophecy, I'm not sure where it is, I'll have to look it up. But it says, I will send the hunters after you to bring you back. It's Jeremiah 16. So, that's right, so you're familiar. So yeah. God used even people that are hunting them to, to, for, to compel them to go home. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yet in other passages it says you'll come like as if you're on a carpet. That literally happened to the Jews that came out of Yemen. As right. they call over. So there are different methods mm. that God has used and will continue to use. So he knows what is best. Uh, so, But I can see the fulfillment of caring which has never happened in a previous generation. Yeah. And that's what's so exciting about it. So churches today should, should be excited. I right. should not follow the UN or whatever. They should wow. concentrate what God is doing and say, hey, let's see what the Lord is doing. All right. You know? so, so, all right, so if we should follow the Bible or the UN, so we should say that maybe the people there aren't the right ones yet. Well, probably. I mean, look at what the United Nations just did recently, right? Mm. They made a statue, which is uh, taken from the book of Revelation. Right. Yeah, a statue of a woman and uh, what is oh, what, the, what? The yeah that's right and Twelve. people say how can the united nations take that picture from the book of revelation and do the statue at the head office united nations in new york well the united the eu have done the same thing did you know that if you go to Strasbourg, the head office of the EU, mm. outside the building, there's a statue of a woman riding uh, a cow. Uh, a be, uh, you know, a male cow. All right. Yeah. So and that is taken from the Book of Revelation as well. Uh, and well, well, she yeah, she the woman the riding the beast. Yeah. That's right. right. But that's that's says, also, that is taken Jesus literally Jesus from the Book of Revelation. Right. Right. And you're going, what are they doing? Mm. So you get agencies, circular ones, taking things from the Bible, using it for their own political agenda, mm. and Christians are. They don't notice what's going on around them. And they say, what's going on? He says, yeah, those people, they're ungodly, but they're using the word of God, right? 
in a very yeah. bad way, but nonetheless, yeah. look around. This is what is happening for our very own eyes. Yeah. That has never happened before. Yeah, right? true. Yeah. So we should say the Lord is coming is sooner than we think. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, so, so oh, yeah, the church yeah. should wake up. You should be telling the church to wake up. Look what's well, happening around us. Well, yeah, we try, but they just ignore us. I know that some yeah. of them do ignore us. Yeah. That is true. I, I know. It's very sad yeah. if that happens. Yeah. Yeah. But, but here's the, the main thing I was after, though, really is that so we've gone on about you know, the children of Israel and trying to identify them. Now, do you think in the Bible God has put a way where we can identify like, the women who are of the children of Israel? Do you think he's given some way that something he said he's going to do to them? And because of what he says, we could use what he said in order to say, oh look, th well, those women must be related to this Bible verse. Well, you mean in a, in a, in a Bible prophecy way? Well, uh, well, it's a prophecy because he said that God is saying this is what he's going to do. Yeah. So he's prophesying he's going to do this. He doesn't. And so obviously when he does this thing, it's going to affect those women. Well, which women are you talking about then? Well, well let, let me just read it and then... Not, we'll not see Babylon, it. the harlot. Huh? No, 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 no. This, this is Isaiah 3 and 16. It says, moreover, the Lord says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling of ornaments about their feet, and their coals and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablet, tablet and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crispian pins and the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. So obviously they're dressed yeah. pretty. Well, yeah. uh, uh, straight away the context is showing that these women in Israel were being haughty. Yeah, yeah. Frightful. Yeah. Right, so God is going to send judgment on them. Yes. And throughout Israel's long history, that has indeed occurred when God did do that. All you do yeah. is read the Book of Lamentations. Yeah, so, so, right. so, now, so that is so, quite true. Yes, yeah, so now if you go to the judgment, it says, um, 24 says, and it shall come to pass, and instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. What's Paul there? And instead of a girdle, a rent, and instead of well set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Yeah. So now, later. if we go by these descriptions, That's crazy. if we look around the world, which woman would you say, uh, if you, let's say you go into a Sunday church, yeah. and there are loads of women sitting there from different nations, to believe. which woman would you notice are the ones that tend to be overweight? Overweight? Everybody's overweight. No, but when you go into a, 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 even a, especially a Pentecostal church, you notice that one certain type, even if here, certain types of women tend to be more overweight than others. Well, th that would be too general generalized because uh, they are they're telling to they're roughly nine billion, billion people in the world. Yeah. Five billion are women, roughly 50-50. Yeah. And you're going to find a percentage that are actually obese. Yeah. In every national so, group. Pull there. Yeah, so but, that but could not determine whether or not that scripture is talking about all these people. <laughs> yeah, but I'm talking about on average. When right. you go, when you go into well, I wouldn't use that. I would. All right, all right. So, 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 so that one's not so strong. But this, this next one, let's see if you can handle this. So remember, it says, and instead of well set here, baldness. Yes, he is. Now, if you look around the world. Which women anywhere? So if you go to India, do the women do they cut their hair off or wear wigs? I don't know. I've never. All right. What well, about in China? Do you see Chinese women walk around with wigs? Have you telling me God can't? No, no, I wouldn't. Do I, do I wouldn't that, say so because I've right. never you experienced me God that can't phenomenon do something. my own eyesight. Yeah. Or heard about it. All right. But what I do know is that, yeah. for example, this even in God. Western Europe. Uh, men, uh, men and women actually deliberately wore wigs. Oh, yeah, we yeah, still yeah, carry yeah, that yeah, tradition yeah, in, uh, yeah, in the legal profession. The Bible profession. said he is. Yeah, yeah, the Bible right. said that's, that's, that's not what I 
So well, women wait, to God. wear wigs because they become bold no, no, is a sign of shame. God. No, no, but what, I'm, what I mean Already. is, I don't mean uh, what we might think. I'm talking about when you observe. Yeah. So if, you, if you're sitting on the bus like going to Brixton, I don't believe. you sit on the bus watching the women get on and off. Okay. It's a fact. Would you see some Chinese women getting on with wigs on? I've never seen that. So I wouldn't know. I've never touched that's, their heads. That's, that's, that's right. So, so maybe they do, but they don't tell me because that's the whole idea wearing a wig. So yeah, yeah, that people I, I, don't know. I know. But now, if you're up on the bus, would you yeah. see some Indian woman getting on with wigs? Well, you're asking a question about a cultural thing, which I have no observable data to collaborate or deny. So no, I wouldn't no, have to no, answer that. No, no, I mean, Someone no. might say, well, in my experience, I've seen lots of women. Maybe they are from, say, East Africa, and this is exactly what has happened to them. But does that mean that that prophet is talking about them? I don't think so. Yeah, but remember, this prophet is talking about people that exist, don't they? Yeah, the, that, that is the talking women. about Israel. Yeah, and he's talking right. about... So these are Jewish women then, that yeah. have got this problem that God is going to bring on them. He's yeah. not talking about any other nationality or yeah, ethnic group. Yeah, but remember, they were scattered from the land. Yeah, but it so, doesn't so matter. So the point is, these are the women that are Jewish, right? And they've been punished like that. But does that mean that punishment is forever? I don't think so. Yeah, but, but the problem is, is if those if women exist like this, that means it's still happening. No, but you're missing my point, my friend. Look, yeah. in the Second World War, right? Mm. Uh, if, you, if you were fighting against the Nazis in France, you belong to the, the French resistance, yeah. right? Now, some women and men, but let's look at the women, collaborated with the Nazis, officers, because yeah. they wanted to have an easier time under the German occupation. Yeah, yeah. Now, after the war ended and the, and the Allies one what happened to those women that were saying they were say these women are collaborating with the nazis their heads were shaved off it became bold yeah, 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 right but, but. as a as a sign of shame i've actually seen them running away from people trying to shave their heads off yeah we're both. literally i know so that is like that happening these jewish ladies in that context at that time period that god is talking about now i would have to look into jewish history to find out when that happened then i can come back with an answer at the moment i can't yeah but remember i'm i'm not even talking about history i'm talking about current times now no, so, but that's an historical God, thing directed God. against the house of Israel. Yes, but right, right, against the 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah, so but if that happened to the women of the 12 tribe, mm. then it must have happened sometime. And yeah. I'm not disputing that. Yeah, but the point right, is... Right, it's got nothing to do with blacks or whites of today. He's talking about Israel, the Jewish people, women especially, mm. encountering that particular judgment upon them because of their haughtiness or pride. Yes. And that's it. Okay, so but then uh, why would you explain? So if we looked in the world now, like I was saying, you sit on the bus and watch the woman get on and off. Yeah. If you sat there and realized that, wait, why are these women getting on and off the bus? I only see one type of woman wearing wigs. Why would that be? Well, if you go to north of London, there are many Jewish women that wear wigs. No, I'm talking everywhere. That is because no. it's a religious custom. Yeah, but right. I, I, no, I, I don't know why they do it, to be honest, but I've known about it. Yeah, but... But that is not the same thing as that passage. That passage is saying that's a punishment. Yeah. That they'll become bold. Yeah, so it's a... Right, end of story. Yeah, no, it's, it's a punishment. Yeah, so but when did that punishment occur? Yeah, I would say any time. But right, my, okay, yeah, yeah, so but leave it like that. No, no, but my point is... So if are you if trying to say that prophecy is related to some other group who are not Jewish by no, ancestry? No, I'm saying this is how you can identify them. No, that's a false identification. That's right. not the only way to identify Jewish people. Uh, all right, so, so why... <laughs> that's so talking about a particular group yeah. that behaves... Uh, if not every Jewish lady behaves like that. Right. Right. But, uh, so how? So are you going to dismiss this lady as Jewish because she's not prideful? Oh, she's not uh, boastful? All right. But okay. So it is the next. It, it wouldn't make sense, would it? No, no. But we're trying to identify some women here. Yeah, but so, that, but the identification is already there. It's talking about Jewish women from Israel living in the land, and that's their punishment. Now yeah. I'm thinking that this must have occurred a long time. Time ago, it's yeah. got nothing to do with today. Does it say this is in the latter days? 
No, you but but then why? Would, how would you explain why it's only one group of women? Yeah, but that's the Jewish women. No, no, I'm talking that's in the it? world. I'm talking in the world. I'm not just talking. You can go. To, if you, so if you go to America yeah. and here, which group of women do you see? A wearing wigs and B they love fighting each other as well. Who, who's that? Well, that's the pre that's the that's the behavior pattern. Yeah. But that doesn't. That, but does that mean they're Somalis, they're Jewish, they're uh, Europeans from Spain or Portugal? No. It just means that's how they behave, and it's only because they're Jewish, because they come from a Jewish background. But that doesn't mean that Jewish people will have to do that. No. Yeah, but it wouldn't make sense. Right, but remember. Right, so you keep everything in that context. Why is there? I take that from Isaiah, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, so Isaiah is talking to his own chief people. Yeah. He actually tells you that in Isaiah chapter 1. Right? He says Israel is in rebellion. Mm. So the men are included. So now he's zeroing in on the particular watchful, prideful yeah. women in Israel. Yeah. That, well, that is where the judgment will come. Not, not to any other body. And this God says, oh, by the way, when these women in Russia behave like this, I'm going to do that. Then you would know God is talking about those particular women in a different country. But this is talking about Israelites in Israel facing that judgment. And that's it. They can't talk anymore about it. Uh, uh, all right. So, so when you go back to verse 17, it says, therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughter of Zion. So, right. Uh, right, so which women in the world do you see have hair which, which is short and they don't like it being short? Yeah, but the look, no, is that the passage for eternity while women live in, on the planet Earth from the time Isaiah wrote that or is it for a particular period and time when that judgment did come? That's no. how you have to look at it. Yeah, but it doesn't say it's going to be... It, it gives you the judgment. Yeah, and but that's it. it. Exactly, so you yeah. leave it like that. Yeah, okay? so then just when leave it. Yeah, but remember... But, I, but the Jewish... If you talk to Jewish people, mm. uh, and you ask them, I say, can you tell me more about this particular passage and when it might should have happened? And they'll say, oh yeah, that happened in the days of uh, Ezekiel or like Jeremiah or whatever. So because they know better than us. We're not Jewish. Uh, they are. Yeah, and, but the story. and I leave you like that. Uh, but to me, it's, it's pointless talking about it. Okay? Yeah, but so so you, so so you're saying you know what happened with those? Uh, obviously, the women I'm talking about is is our women. What reason do you think is that a lot of them will, sh will cut off their hair and wear wigs? Why do you think that is? Well, ask them. I've never asked no, them. No, 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 but why do you think so many of them, it's happened to so many of them? Well, I say, I've never asked them. It's never entered now, my head to ask them. What has he got what, to what? do? I wouldn't so, bother them. To so, me, it doesn't make any sense. A woman should have the same God-fearing attitude like Sarah. Sarah yeah. didn't do that, right? Yeah. Well, neither did I think Mary in the New Testament or Anna or he, Elizabeth, uh, he wine right? Into wine. But yeah. they followed the right. Lord Is and God it? honored them, oh, right? The so you don't see that being repeated in the New Testament, that particular practice. So, so, so uh, uh, and that's why to me it's very suggestive that this is an, an event that occurred like in the Old Testament, not the New. Okay, so sorry. All right, so He's you know what's it. happening in, in the world? Where, yeah, you, know the world? Yeah, you know what's happening in the world? Yeah, you know what's happening in the world? Well, you've got the... You know it's how you've had the Hebrew Israelites that come around since like the 69. And they've been... You know, we hear more of them over the years coming by. Not like I was before. the Hebrew Israelites. The oh, Jewish no, Israelites. No, 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 no. You know the, these, these Hebrew Israelites in America? Oh, black Americans who think they're Jewish. Yeah, yeah, the ones who are on the street. Yeah, that's crazy. But, yeah, yeah, that's why. But so notice how they've risen up. You're swimming in it, mate. You're and then since the uh, 90s, uh, for some mysterious woman that reason, I wouldn't have signed wearing wigs more. <laughs> but no, no, but no, no. But here, here's, I, th I think I know where you're going. Yeah, but here's the yeah. thing. No, so those two events. Do you think they're just events that don't mean anything? And that God has no, and, and, you think, and you think God's got nothing to do with it? So, so, look, do you know what the Samaritans did? Yeah, you know what the Samaritans were. Who says yeah, you mean the people up in, not, in the Samaria? Yeah, that's yeah. right. The Samaritans were not Jewish, okay? But they copied a lot of things from the surrounding culture. Yeah. Right? So when they confronted, one of them was a woman in John chapter 4. Mm. She met the Lord, and the Lord deliberately went to see her. She sat down by the well, Jacob's well. 
Yeah. So he, he was quizzing him. Said, well, if you drink from this water, you're going to thirst again. But I have something to give you, which is for eternal life. Mm. Uh, she's going, ah, oh, but you just don't talk to us. Yeah. So this is ultra divine. Yeah. So she's, she's puzzled. How could this Jewish man actually be talking to me as a Samaritan woman? That's not kosher at all. Yeah. And then he's talking about eternal water. What is that? So she listens attentively and she realizes, could this be the Messiah? And she goes trekking all the way back to Sikar, the town of Sikar. No, 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 no. mm. yes. Tell the men, not the women, this but the men, yes. could this be the Messiah? Come and talk to him. So she drags yes, them, yes, they yes. come and they, and they check it out. Mm. And Jesus stayed the two more days talking about himself, the gospel, etc. However, the point is, some Samaritans were very good at being faithful to God. Yeah. But the majority of Samaritans, they were constantly mixing up religious ideas. Yeah, yeah. And you find so one of them in Acts right? called Simon Magus. Yeah. And he eventually drifts off the page of Holy Writ. So and we find him from circular history in Rome. And, and he's elevated as a right? god. So yeah, 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 because that's a Samaritan way of thinking, you see. Yeah. Now, these Americans are very good at mixing religious I mean, ideas. So some people can in America have done the same thing. Mm. Right? And they think, oh, look at this wonderful coincidental thing. They're oh. called, they, they don't call them the Samaritans, they call themselves Hebrews, Israelis, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they're thinking, this is right, but it's all mixed up. But, but the interesting interesting about it, though, is that when you look at what they do, yeah. uh, they, they're like, you know how a lot of other nations think that our people are like lazy, you know, especially when they're born over here in America. Yeah. And yet these guys will get up early, go and stand on the street, for like six hours at a time holding the Bible. Yeah. Now, someone might say, oh, it's Satan that got them to do that. But would Satan get someone to preach from the Bible on the street? Possible. I wouldn't be surprised because they're making their own righteousness, remember? Yeah, but remember, when... when and they're driven. Yeah, but when they're reading what God said, yeah. it's still His words that He said. So that, those words are positive words. Of course they are. God's yeah, so words never go back to God uh, empty. Yeah, so then why would Satan have some people go out and speak God's words? Ah, but Satan is very good at psychology. He knows the mind of man. He's been busy doing it for thousands of years. Yeah. Remember, he tried to tempt the Lord in the wilderness? Mm. And the Lord responded by quoting Deuteronomy. Uh, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, etc. Mm. No, and he finds his gift behind the Satan. Right yeah. Right? Satan was a good angel, but he knows the Bible inside out, but he doesn't really believe in it. Right. So he so can get somebody who thinks, ah, this is the word of God. Read the Bible and do this, that, that, that. So he's doing works. But there's no relationship between that individual on the street corner for six hours and uh, right. God himself. So he thinks he's actually pleasing God when he's not. You can't do it that way. But, 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 his okay. interest, yeah, but his interesting thing though is that even though some of the doctrines that come out with aren't good, yeah. they're actually encouraging people to read the Bible. They're encouraging their people to read the Bible. Oh, I agree. Well, that's a byproduct of the Bible anyway. Yeah, yeah, even in, even in circular people. schools in Britain, yeah. people read the Bible not because they want to know the truth of it, but because they want to understand how English literature has emerged out of reading the Bible in the past. Yeah, no, so, so these guys are doing a similar thing. So they encourage you to be able to read the Bible, right? Fine. I wish they only did that and nothing else. No, no, but what they're telling people to do is uh, to read the. They're telling their people to read the Bible because uh, they're in it. Medical, medical. Well, they're not medical. in it unless they're in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah, but remember, by them telling them that, sure. they have to read what God said about how you have to stop sinning. Yeah, so they're actually fixing their well, people. Well, they should. Yeah, but that's what's happening. Though. But but they, they stop sinning. One of the sins that I see a lot in some churches, anti-Semitism coming in, right, mm -hmm. taking the things that belong to Israel and hijacking them as if they belong to us when it doesn't. You gotta do that yeah, but Jack. remember that, why that, that, that is wrong. wrong. Yeah, but if you read in reading Ezekiel that it doesn't match what's happened to those people who are there, so what I they're going by the Bible, they might not be wrong. 
Yeah, yeah, but these guys, I mean, you, it's called replacement theology mm -hmm. for some uh, theologians. Uh, and what it's saying is that God has finished the Jewish people, therefore the Gentiles have come in, they're replacing Jews, and therefore the promises of Israel are not on them. What mm -hmm. is a lot of baloney? Yeah, but, but anyway, so, so you think, you know, like, uh, what the point I was trying to make is related to like the self-esteem of, of our women compared to the other women's nation. Yeah, well, esteem is different. I mean, it's good that they're God-fearing. Nobody would doubt that. God would not doubt that. But you cannot use that text and then say, this must be what these people are really, who they are. That is, that is, not, that, that is stretching it. Yeah, but then you wouldn't have a proper explanation for why their self-esteem is down and why they're wearing these wigs. Well, you have to ask them. Yeah, but then... If but you, so you're telling me... Are you telling me that they deliberately shaved their head off? He really yeah, do you know how they get those wigs on? Yeah. You have to, you have to scrape off the, the... Your entire hair. Yeah, to, to, to glue the oh wig on. Oh my goodness. Yeah, then they're disobeying God's law. Actually, it wasn't a yeah. woman should have long hair. Yeah, but the thing is... Right. No, no, but their hair is long, remember? Well, right. well, they shouldn't cut it off then. You have a heart no, but this, this, right. but this, is the, this is what I'm trying to say though. Doesn't it seem as if it's some sort of... Uh, something anymore. spiritual which is causing their hair to be like that. It's not from God. It's called okay. because a man should have short hair. A woman by nature should have long hair. I know some women don't have extremely long hair, but it's really longer than a man's hair. That's what you can tell. That's a woman and that's a man. Nowadays, we find in so-called political correct world, so-called men sometimes have long hair. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's wrong you're, either. You're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're caught up in a so women should not shave their heads off. And but, a religious but right? thing. It's only when a judgment has occurred, mm. as happened in Isaiah, and then you say, it's oh, this is not Catholic normal. Catholic exactly. Catholic that's yeah. why it's a judgment. Yeah, it's a but, but it's oh, not every Catholic woman's got to shave their heads off. But but then here's the thing though, is that if we went to those women, show them what was in Isaiah and say that the reason why they're doing this is because it's a it's a judgment from God then that means that they since they know it's from God that will stop them from actually thinking they have to win oh, hang on. but these Isaiah was talking about people in that time period he's not talking about the 21st century no but God God affects the whole of time so are you telling me that prophecy was for every generation but he doesn't say it's not and God always Oh, but we're, then you're assuming your life, to me the context demands that that should be read that that particular judgment was that for generation just that Jonah was told to go to Nineveh mm. and then he went yeah. one direction Tarshish and God says no you're going to go to Nineveh mm. once he got to Nineveh those Ninevites right they repented from the king down here yeah now the generation that followed Jonah and that particular generation Ninevites right they probably still kept what Jonah had said yeah because their father the media father told them mm. but in a few generations later down the line okay. About it. Yeah. Right. So that's the same advice there from the first judgment camp at a particular time in Junctures. That's why I say it's good to ask the Jewish rabbis or even Jewish scholars when was this particular prophecy fulfilled in the history of Israel so that I can get a, a, a good picture of what's going on here. But some people yeah. might say it's still relevant. No, I'm not Protestant, I'm not Catholic. And yeah. I'm a Bible believer. Yeah. Thanks. So <laughs> I have to get going. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hold on.